ready to roll. Yeah, I'm still damn near full. Uh, I guess we go out and around. Okay, so we're hitting the road to go get uh, breakfast, burritos, tacos, something. I'm just going to cheat and go through the line here. I don't want to go all the way around. There's a little taco joint about 10 miles away, so that's where we're headed. I'm cheating. I'm using Google because I couldn't remember how far uh, east or west I am on uh, 290 right now. It's uh, that way. And unfortunately, we've got a playing fast traffic so that's gonna suck Ooh, wind is still chilly this morning so our low last night was 37 degrees. I slept okay, but my toes were cold. <laughs> yeah. Well, I slept in my jacket. Yeah, I slept in my jacket. Every layer I had pretty much, except for my riding jacket. I didn't put that on. I use that as a pillow enforcement. So there's a little bit of breeze this morning. This isn't calm air, but I am just penned open to the stop. I haven't let it out one little fraction of an inch. And I'm only getting 50 indicated into this wind, 51 now. So that's uh, not a great testament to this thing's highway capabilities. Okay, so we have arrived. Takaria Chihuahua. This is a great place. They expanded. It used to be really tiny, and this all this is new part of the building here. Been oh man, yeah. It's been here forever. I remember stopping by here and getting tacos 20, uh, 25 years ago. On the way back and forth to work, man. They have been here forever. Got all my stuff. All right, here we go. Did I get my key? No. Derp. It's not the Super Cub, you got to take the key. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Yeah, as long as it doesn't leave you stranded like it did me. Yeah, see, we gotta line out the door. Early in the morning, see, none of this, they didn't have this pergola out here a long time ago. There was no pergola, there was, no, all this was dirt. <laughs> You'd have a line of people stretching way back here. All construction guys, you name it, anybody traversing this path. Crazy. All right, so back to camp we go. Joshua, Neil, and I are uh, back. Uh, Adrian had to stop and pick up fuel, so that's okay. We're just going to try to slowly squeak through here and not uh, run into anybody. Thanks. Okay then. Here's camp. We're, our neighbor took off a little bit earlier. He said he had to go work on uh, his car or truck or something like that so he rolled his giant uh, mobile coach out of here and asked us to save his spot so that's how we're saving a spot <laughs> uh, all right well we're gonna get unpacked and uh, drink some beer okay so here's uh, Neil's Mad Max Zuma 125 that's what I call it I don't know what he calls it <laughs> totally customized and I've had quite a few people ask me for 
a uh, detailed breakdown uh, of Neil's trailer and what he's done to it, how he built it, and kind of how it's evolved over the last few years for him. And yeah, and I'm gonna show all of his uh, customizations and stuff here too. All, everything you see on here is custom fab by Neil for his uh, touring on this little uh, Zuma. So he's got his own uh, custom made uh, plexiglass windshields, all these mounts, everything you see here, he's all fabricated everything. Uh, hand guards, uh, leg deflectors, this uh, frame uh, for the headlight uh, winglet, whatever you want to call it, everything's all custom. Under here, he's got a, a bar that he fabricated to put his highway pegs on, and that's tied into you know strong frame points everywhere. He's got an extra little foot plate here. Uh, he's got his uh, jerry can and coffee uh, carriers here. Uh, it's a homemade jerry can that fits in this spot. Notice the uh, circular cutout. That's so he can clear his uh, his uh, thermos. Uh, and then the, uh, the coup de gras that we looked at last time is his homemade uh, oil carrier. So this is not just an oil carrier, it's a drain pan all in one. So he drains the oil into the catch pan here, fills the fresh oil back into the motor from the container, and then pours the waste oil in this back into that. Uh, and people say, well, why do you need to change your oil on the road? Well, this thing is supposed to have an oil change every 1,800 to 2,000 miles we can do that in half of a trip. So there's that answer. <laughs> and then this guy, what do you think that weighs empty, Neil? About 30, 30 pounds? pounds? About 30 pounds. So this started its life as a Suzuki JR650, or I'm sorry, 650, JR50, a uh, little scooter, a uh, little mini bike. And he used the rear swing arm and the steering neck to create the basic uh, shell of it and then the frame the under cradle here is just all custom pieces that he's developed over time and he carries everything on this from tools to camping goods to everything fitting in that uh, plastic tote over there and uh, it's uh, ultimately functional we've used it to carry firewood he carries pretty much everything you can imagine and how it articulates is He's got two points that tie off of uh, kind of where the upper point of the rear shock is, but he's made this bracket here, and that allows the up and down, and then it's the steering head from the Suzuki JR50 or something along those lines uh, that gives you your side to side. So it tracks with the bike in a corner. It leans with the bike the same direction the bike is going, but then as it's cornering, the trailer can articulate independently. So. Got a nice suspension back here. It's tight, works good, doesn't bounce around, doesn't do anything silly all the way. While things burn. Yeah, just in case uh, something's burning that doesn't need to burn. He's got his fire extinguisher. This is a new addition that he's added to the front of this uh, new central frame here uh, for his Rotopax water carrier. And we'll just load it up here bit by bit. We use rock straps uh, to secure everything down for the most part some of its bungees uh, but the big box is held down by rock straps because they keep positive tension on stuff all the time and then uh, got his uh, cook kit here straps everything in and it's all bespoke fit for everything that uh, he has on here He's made all the brackets to fit exactly the pieces of kit that he's taken with him. He's got all of his tire changing tools. He's got ratchet, uh, everything that he needs to pull apart the CVT housing, replace a belt. And he did have to replace a belt on the way out here for this. I'll show a picture of that. I'll throw that in there. But he, uh, he got about halfway here and uh, blew a belt at 20,000 miles, you think it was, roughly on that belt, something like that? He's getting about 18 to 20,000 miles out of his uh, CVT belts. So all these tools just slot right in, and they're all a friction, friction and pressure fit with each other, and they just stay in there. So now we got the box going back on. Strap it over, cinch it down. And then normally what he carries on top of here is a little folding camp stool and his tent uh, strapped underneath these straps on the top of the box. 
But of course those are over at camp. So that's done. That's ready to hit the road. Got his jerry can in here. What's that, about a gallon? A little yep. under a gallon? A little, little more. A little over a gallon, Just okay. Around. Coffee. Coffee. Strap that puppy in. And this is command central for- Mud uh, kicker. Oh yeah, 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 you got your big puck. This goes here. Nice. <laughs> and everything, place for everything and everything in its place. And here's his uh, funnel for the uh, oil changes. So that's so, command central for the Touring Zuma. You got two bolts, uh -huh. pulls that bracket, three, three, third one pulls this, four, five, six, this whole thing comes off, seven, eight, and it's back to a strip pipe. Right. And then he's got a quick disconnect harness there for his wiring that runs the tail light and turn signals. So he can pretty much just undo those two upper bolts from the trailer, pull the electrical, and drop that at camp, and then just ride the Zuma bob without a uh, trailer behind it. So there is the uh, Mad Max Touring Zuma. And what are you at, 40,000 on this now? A little over 40,000 miles on this little Zuma. He's planning on tearing it down, tearing down the motor right around 50,000 miles to see what it looks like inside and uh, uh, do a new piston and rings and valves and oil pump and all that. but. It's working. So here's the uh, trailer in motion. You see how it uh, articulates. He can do real tight figure eights on this thing. The trailer just follows exactly where the bike is going. It stays in the same path. <laughs> and Kevin and uh, Tom's daughter coming in uh, to say howdy with us here from the Austin Riker Riders group. Here's the new F3, Tom's. Kevin's uh, painted up uh, fancy, fancy Riker. And then uh, Tom's uh, 900 rally with his daughter. Awesome. How goes it? Look at you with that fancy reverse light going on. Did this thing have the red, or did you paint that? I painted that. Oh, okay, I was gonna say. You just pop this off, uh -huh. and then pop those out the back. Paint cool. Them, put them back in, same thing with these. Uh, oh, nice, nice. How it goes, buddy? Good, yourself? All right. Yeah, so we uh, we rode the little bike, so. We'll walk around it. Yeah, yeah, I see the, uh, the color kind of changes based on your angle and perspective. So here, it looks kind of reddish, burnt orange, whatever you want to call that color. But looking down at it that way, it's more of a black. It's interesting. Cool. Fancy. How do you like that exhaust? It makes it hard to communicate. Uh-huh, yeah. It's wonderful. <laughs> it doesn't seem quite as loud as my uh, two brothers. No, definitely not. But it's, uh, it's loud. Nice. Cool. How do you like that color change? That's different. So is it a wrap or is it? No, it's painted. Oh, yeah. It's plasti dip. But I see he uh, he got these. He liked the exoskeletons. Oh, yeah. I had those for a while long time. I guess, it, yeah, it was after that first ride that we did. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So let's look at the, uh, the F3 Beast here. So this is the this F3 Limited. Yeah, well, you know, that's athletic. This is more of a touring platform. I do like the floorboards. Yes. Fancy. Worth every penny. Yeah, I'll bet. And I'm gonna get the uh, the handbrake mod. Yeah. I'm yeah. Get the handbrake mod so that I can stand it right. Cool. Oh, you've got a uh, you got headlight covers on there too. Yeah. Cool. The other day. <laughs> Eyeballs. I got them for free. I was nice. Like, yeah, we'll give them a try. Nice. Oh, and it's got driving lights. Yeah. Cool. I installed them, and it's also fog lights. Yeah, so drive, uh, are they dual mode? Ah, sweet, so dual mode, yeah, driving dual lights mode. and fog lights. So now, are these a Can-Am accessory? No, it's a sling mod. Sling mod, okay. And it, it comes up here to a power switch that you install okay. into the stock slot. Nice, cool. Oh, a nice little push button. Hey, sweet. The push button on the left is the heated hand grips. Uh-huh. 
And is that an aftermarket or is that no, Can-Am? that's stock with that's the stock. Limited. I gotcha. Okay. So is this one? Mm-hmm. Which heats these for the passenger. Nice. Fancy, these seats fancy. I upgraded. They are the Can-Am Comfort Seats Comfort Seat, right. Worth every penny. Yeah, they're quilted up. They look pretty, uh, oh wow, look at that. That's like yeah. an air ride suspension there, boy. And the driver's seat? Uh-huh. The stock seat is more narrow. Uh-huh. So it'll be so fine this is for wider, you, right? But this perfect for the fatter guy. Gotcha. For the and then that's bed. that's an accessory as yes, well. That yeah. Is a yeah. That's yeah. a king size Factor. bed. For him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> now this is a motorized lazy boy recliner. That's oh, what that is. Yes. So, Tom, Adrian, Adrian, Tom, Kevin. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Hello. Hello. Good to see you this again. Is my daughter Sabrina. Uh -huh. Sabrina. Hi. Adrian. Good to meet you. She she has purchased the Riker from me. Uh huh. Right. Basically, you got it out of my name so I can get it to the There you go. Honestly, there it is. Park and you're in neutral. Yep, park yeah. neutral. So you're going to want to put it in reverse, you got to push R and then back shift. Yeah, yeah. And then forward once to first. And then well, when I get back here, I'll let you do that part of it. So, this much I do remember. Take off the parking brake. Turn off the brake, you're good. Put yep. It in gear. Turn it That's it. First gear. Cool. All right, so this is uh, the F3 Limited here. Take it for a little spin down the road. The power assist steering on these things is freaky. It's so light. <laughs> After being on the Riker, you're like, oh, what? And this big Rotax 1300 is very smooth, especially where the uh, you don't have that direct steering, uh, like go-kart steering like the Riker has. The handlebars are isolated from the vibration quite a bit. I rode around the RT for several hours one day. And uh, it's a very nice machine, but it handles like a brick. Uh, it's very rough uh, as far as cornering. Just did, I don't know, it didn't feel right. Straight line stability and comfort is quite good on him, but uh, not what I wanted out of a machine. This is a good blend right down the middle, it feels like, so far. Of course, I'm no authority on spiders. I've never owned one. I've got uh, the Riker, and I've ridden plenty of spiders, but never any of these. Yeah, this is a cruising machine here, boy. This is long-term comfort. He's got the Madstad screen on here, and man, that thing makes a big difference. The factory screen uh, is shorter and has kind of an upturned lip on it, and the, the F3 that I rode, I noticed a lot of helmet turbulence, and I thought, well, that's odd for a you know, kind of sort of touring bike. These Madstad screens are just fantastic. Yeah, you could crush 1,000-mile days in this seat, no problem. Mm, brakes are really good. Alright, this looks like my spot. Can't figure out if that goes in the inside lane or the outside lane. I'm getting ready to find out. That's quick. For a big heavy bike, that's quick. Yeah, Tom has been looking at my uh, new Rebel that I picked up. He's like, oh man, that might be one of my next purchases. <laughs> so he was asking me about the seat comfort and all that and how, uh, what I think of the factory suspension on it. I think for somebody that's much heavier than I am, uh, the rear suspension might be a little inadequate, but I don't know if you could crank up the rear preload on that spring to compensate for the weight and still not sacrifice too much ride quality. I don't know. Time will tell. I don't have enough miles on that thing yet, but as far as giddy up and go, oh man, that thing goes. 
74 pound feet of torque and only 500 pounds, it will get right down the road. And that torque is available at, you know, right smack dab in the mid range, 4,500 RPM or 4,250, something like that. Oh, it's a hoot to play with. I've only got you know, 300 and some miles, 400 miles maybe on mine right now. Been playing with my other toys, and now I'm out on a road trip on the small bikes. So otherwise, I'd be out putting more miles on that rubble this weekend. Brakes are really good on this thing. Almost touchy, but not in a bad way. They're just very right now. Getting time on the golf cart, that's cool. <laughs> Turning it at low speed, so effortless with that power assist. That's pretty cool. All right, parking brake engaged off and off cool yeah that's fun i could do road trips on that put some miles down good stuff um the uh what's your jiggy uh i take cooling vests you okay. just wet them down yeah. and as long as you have airflow you're so good helmet, man? Oh, yeah that that would be cool because last year we did the 115 degree and it was unbearable yeah yeah oh no that that uh, trip that uh, Nick and I did to the Twisted Sisters in July, holy hell, the first two days of it, it was like 101, 102, and high humidity. Oh, we were dying. Uh-huh. Got to practice safe throttling. <laughs> All right, thanks for stopping in, guys. Good to see you. I'll, uh, I'll let you know when I come to Austin. So Tom and his daughter and Kevin are heading out. Uh, they just wanted to stop in and say howdy. And Tom wanted me to let uh, let me ride that F3. Whoop! <laughs> Parking brake fail. <laughs> so he's got the RLS exhaust on that. Sounds good. It's not nearly as loud as uh, my two brothers that I had. So anyway, good to see them. I'll have to come back up to Austin here soon and uh, bring my Rebel. Let them ride that. But this is us, and I'm back to this. Later. Can't see anything through the fence. <laughs> I have to get like on the fence past it.
reach the sea farm resort zone in turn three and four. 